Hello and welcome to this Live from MozFest episode of the Mozilla Curriculum Workshop. I'm kind of off camera, but thrilled to be here with wonderful community members who've come from around the world to share their work and learn about each other and our mission to protect the open web. Our format today will be a little different. We're recording rather than live streaming, and we're going to pass around the old laptop and let people kind of give their impression of um, MozFest, share a bit about their experience here, what they've been up to, things that might have surprised them, overwhelmed them, delighted them. We'll try to account for it all here together. And uh, to kick that process off, here's Amira. Thanks, Chad. Hey, everyone. Live from MozFest. Um, as I just said to the group that is around us, have you ever ran a technology-based program or session and the technology completely not be there for you at that time that you fully planned for? Um, so we are living in the real world, and that has happened to us today, but we're really excited to keep going on and still document this process and share our regular live pass with you at a later time and date. And we have a fantastic group, which I'm looking at right now. So if you see me looking off screen, I'm looking up around me uh, and seeing a really great group of people that have experience either jumping into sessions or leading sessions or doing something very mozfest -y or being very overwhelmed by sessions <laughs> and the MozFest scene. And so we are really excited to hear a little bit about what they've learned uh, throughout this time and how we can take what they've learned and share it out with you. So thank you for joining us. And without any further ado, um, we are going to start the interactive part with the people in this little space we have going on. So Chad, who is now completely off screen but an arm, uh, come on in with me. We have to get really close for you to see us both. There we go. We did it. Yeah. All right. How shall we start, Chad? I think we ought to pass it along and invite our guests to introduce themselves, say where they're from, what they've been up to while they've been here, and uh, you know, share their impressions of MozFest live from the event. Totally. And I think we are going to start with Janet over there if she's ready for us. Uh, we are going to rotate. Janet, you have to make sure you are in the screen, so if you are not seeing yourself, yes. let us know. Okay. Hi, so I'm Janet from London, but I'm a volunteer for Tanzania Development Trust, and we work in rural Tanzania in areas that are very poorly mapped. Our biggest project is a safe house for girls refusing female genital mutilation in Magumu, northeast Tanzania. Um, so that's run by an amazing um, FGM survivor called Roby Samwelly, who's up here. Um, and she does outreach work in the surrounding villages, but those villages don't appear on any map. So the project that we've been, uh, just finished a workshop in at MOSFEST is about adding those villages to a map, to open street map, so that the girls can be better protected from FGM. And this is a project that we're really um, hoping that people, is an ongoing project. There is a cutting season starting in December, so we really want people to help us get that map finished in the next week or so. So if you're able, to, you can see this way, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> that we'll, we'll demonstrate it. Over here. That's the map. It's, the map is currently 85% complete. We want to finish it to 100% in the next week. So you can um, do this. Anyone who's got an internet connection can go to HOT, H-O-T, Tasking Manager, Task 1788. And from satellite images, you can trace roads, buildings, and villages to help Roby and other people in that area of Tanzania better protect girls from FGM. So if you have a spare five minutes, then please get involved um, and, and help us get that area on the map. Thank you. So my MOSFEST has been amazing. Um, we had a, we even managed to have a live link with the Safe House in Tanzania as part of the workshop. Um, so the Wi-Fi didn't even go down, so it was <laughs> amazing. So thank you very much, and uh, please help us if you can. Thank nice. You. Thank you, Janet. Um, I'm going to toss it to, you can't see anyone on screen right now, but I'm going to toss it to Dan. Dan, I think you're there visible. Yes. And I'm going to put it closer to you so the microphone catches you. All Thank righty. you. Okay. Say hello to the audience. Hi, audience. Uh, tell, tell everyone what you've done in MOSFET and what your experience is. Okay, I, I facilitated a, a workshop on a technology that I developed and am teaching to young uh, students, young makerspace students in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The technology itself is called Stage Genies. You can see what it's all about on studiomindstride.com. 
and what we did here is basically show what can be done with a Raspberry Pi cheaply, a $35 computer, an $8 camera, and uh, freeware software. And the application was to track a hand in front of the camera and play music associated with regions of the camera to show what could be done essentially for free uh, and interesting and to hold a child's interest as you teach it. Cool. Wait. Oh. Yes. What? That is awesome. How has your MozFest been? It's been a great uh, MozFest. Uh, nice. Many, many interesting things going on. Many, many things that are confusing to me. <laughs> um, and uh, it, but more that are, are just plain interesting. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. All right. right. Hey. Closer and louder because this is a microphone-based video right now. Um, so James. As someone who has not led a session at MozFest, and this is your first MozFest, That's right. tell everyone what the coolest thing you saw in the last two days has been. Wow. Well, I'm biased because I'm the digital editor for Africa for BBC News, and so my my interests are very focused on mobile and internet uh, access for for people across the continent. So the coolest thing I saw was the the boards downstairs, which were about the Mozilla Foundation's projects for uh, where women are teaching women how to be more digitally literate. And I thought that was really inspiring. I like the personal stories that are involved. And I'm hoping that the BBC can follow up on this and give this some amazing coverage. Hi. How's your MOSFET experience been? I mean, it's been a bit overwhelming because there's so much incredible things happening here. Um, I'll definitely be back next year. Hi, we're talking to Matthew. Matthew, say hi to the camera. Hello. Uh, I'm Matthew Kopel. I work for the Central New York Library Resources Council, which is a nonprofit in upstate New York. Uh, we do professional development work, um, uh, teaching librarians new skills, helping them get more resources. Uh, I've been working with Chad uh, uh, on a grant uh, to teach librarians and library professionals web literacy, especially in, uh, in the some of the rural areas that we serve. So uh, I got the chance to present here at Mod MozFest this year uh, with some colleagues of mine. And if you want to see some of the, the tools that we remixed based on some of the amazing tools that Chad built, uh, you can, this is probably, this might be backwards, clrc.org slash MozFest. It's a Google Doc with uh, links to uh, different primary source uh, websites, uh, a zine making tool that you can print right from uh, the browser that's all in Thimble, uh, Mozilla's tool for uh, remixing uh, uh, basic web projects, and it's uh, go have some fun with it. It's a, it's a fun way to uh, incorporate historical resources uh, and uh, and coding into your into your curriculum. Nice. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. All right. We're talking over to you. David, you've had a large role in Boston. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, days or months? <laughs> <laughs> Tell them what that means. Okay, so um, my name is Simeon um, Uriko. I'm based in Nairobi. Um, I'm a space strangler for MOSFEST. Um, how do you define a space strangler? It's sort of like a leader for a track um, for, the, for the festival. And for the last couple of months, I've been working to create um, an awesome space where people can come and demystify the web. Um, which is a term to sort of help people understand the way the web works. Um, and it's a bunch of things that has, includes um, curating really awesome sessions. Um, it also includes designing a space that sort of helps people understand how the web works and how to navigate it and things like that. Um, and it's been, it's been a very intense couple of months um, because there's lots of planning involved, there's a lot of scheduling. Um, really early and really late Skype calls for Chad. Um, <laughs> um, but it's been, it's been an amazing experience. Um, I think the last couple of days here at MOSFEST has been more fulfilling because um, initially we're sort, of, we're sort of panicking, trying to figure out has everything that we've planned out worked? Um, will it fall apart? And no, it's held up really well. And so I'm really excited about that. So I feel a sense of relief and a sense of joy that everybody's sort of enjoying the session, so it's awesome. Yay. Hi, everyone. 
So I'm Maggie Jankis from Cape Town, South Africa, and I work with Mozilla Clubs, the regional coordinator for women in web literacy clubs. So essentially what we do is work with high school girls and giving them basic tech skills, having discussions about the burning issues related to young girls and how do we integrate that with tech to come up with our own solutions. So the Moss Fest has been like a candy store for those interested in technology, people like me. But the thing that's quite unique about the Mars Fest is the technology has been domestified to enable everyday people to understand what it's all about. So I think what I've enjoyed is all the tools that I can take back and we can use in our clubs to get young girls interested in careers in tech and in science in general. Thank you, I'm passing you on. Who are you passing on to? Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm from Mexico and I'm here in Mosmas because uh, we love in Mexico like web literacy and want to learn a lot about it because we just start a club with the women and girls leader training. So we are here to learn about other countries, what they are doing and what they are like documenting and what they are like um, working with girls because we want to learn about that. So I'm passing along. Thanks. Lisa, how's your first mass fest? Yeah, it's amazing. It, I, I've never like thought coming here like really soon, but now I'm here and I'm so thankful about that. I've learned a lot, really like a lot. <laughs> nice. We have a group joining you on the side. Yay. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Give the camera a little wave, give our audience a wave, tell them that it's on. Wow, we're going to get closer. Right, right. Well, I'm Kim Wilkins. I'm Zach Minster. And uh, I'm here because of Chad, it's his fault. And um, I'm also one of the Space Wranglers along with Simeon, so for me it's just been a awesome, overwhelming, fascinating, fulfilling, like all the words uh, experience. Um, just don't think it could have gone better. And we're so appreciative for everybody here um, who's really given their all to make this a great uh, learning experience, I think. And you've never been, so what do you nope, think? It's, it's Kim's fault that, <laughs> that I'm here. <laughs> um, it's definitely a lot different than I expected. Um, I came expecting a typical industry conference where we all talked about different strategies in solving memory leaks in C all weekend. <laughs> Turned out to be really awesome, a uh, uh, huge array of topics, lots of exhibitions, lots of fun things to look at and do with your hands. Um, I came to it from the perspective of like, can I, what, what of this can I take home and, and teach to students? And, what teaching strategies are people using here that I can use myself. So in that respect, I feel like I got a lot out of the weekend. Yeah, so we both um, teach computer science. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
I'm hoping someone's going to give me, well, you're all giving me eye contact back. So, uh, do any of you want to share where you go from ooh, here? Ooh, ooh. Oh, in the interest oh. of giving our guests the last word, I'll uh, break in for a moment now to say where we're going next is a mid-November episode about youth leadership. So on November 17th, we'll see you then to talk about uh, what it is that the youth in our uh, network are doing to help lift one another up, lift up their communities, and use the web to help do so. All right, and now time for our wonderful guest. Yes. Talk about what comes next. Anyone want to share what comes next? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, we're going to pass it around again, so you're dealing with me until I, I shipped on over, but such is the glory of this system. Oh, you're both in Hi. there. You can say Hi. <laughs> Do you want to talk about it first? Um, sure. So, um, from a space youngest perspective, like, um, I'm, I'm sort of, I've sort of been obsessed the last few months with creating um, environments that support people like you to do the things that you feel very strongly about um, and the things that uh, matter the most to you. And I've, I don't have, my thoughts are not organized. So one of the things that I hope to do is sort of organize them very well and then maybe share them with the community and find out what are things, while it's not possible sometimes to have the whole of awesome lot of you guys here at MOSFEST, it may be possible for us to take the lessons that we've learned here uh, or that I've learned in terms of creating a really awesome space uh, for people to share their experiences and their, their creativity and give that to you and so that you can create such opportunities for yourselves and for your communities out there. Um, and then hopefully we can also learn lessons from how you implement them and, and what makes sense and what doesn't make sense and just have this global conversation about creating environments and opportunities for people to express themselves creatively, to learn from each other, to make really awesome stuff, uh, and show it to the world. So, yay. Good answer. Awesome. <laughs> so, where do we go from here? So, moving back from here, we're going to have conversations in our clubs about how can we take what, we, what we've been doing within the classrooms and create kits that we can put online for people who want to run similar clubs that are dedicated to young girls and that particularly run offline, even though you're teaching about the internet and the online world. So that's where we move from here. And how do we take all the cool toys and the tech that we've learned about here and teach our young kids about it? Bye. <laughs> Nice. It's hard to follow it. <laughs> like that you said you should go around this way. I know. But, like, and, and that's the thing. And I think that is one of the things that you go forward. And you take inspiration from programs like this that you see, and you let that drive you. That's one of the things that, you, you, that propels us forward from here, is hearing about programs like that and being inspired by them. So, um, so that is like the number one thing that we push forward from here. Uh, otherwise, like practically, uh, we're continuing this web literacy pilot uh, for librarians and uh, hoping to get more of them familiar with the concepts. Um, and uh, I know that the Mozilla Foundation is working on using that web literacy curriculum in other spaces with uh, in, in other communities and just trying to continue to, to teach and demystify the web. There you go. Um, I think one thing that I'm going to do next is there was an idea to have on the BBC a kind of Africa debate around the open internet and open web and this has been inspired by some of the, the big ideas here that we can have more than three basics and um, we don't want two internets, we want uh, one internet for everybody and we need to think harder about this mm -hmm. and I think that's a good start for a conversation that we can take from Mozvest onto the BBC and um, I'm going to ask my teams out in, in Africa to, to start, see if they could go about starting that and how they'd like to do that. And the other thing, my other follow-up is I want to find out where this guy here, Matthew, got his shirt because <laughs> I'm going to go, go to the store. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're, I'm going two ways, as usual. Uh, one is I'm teaching the kids uh, from 8 to 99 uh, to make those tools and toys that, uh, that the rest of you gentlemen and ladies are using. Uh, and then the other is over the next year we'll be doing some globally uh, participative performance arts um, from, uh, in particular, between Adelaide, Australia, 
uh, Austin, Texas, and Chattanooga, Tennessee, and then hopefully we're looking for a, a site in Canada as well to participate. And the first of those will be musical. The next one will hopefully be a puppet show uh, with life-size puppets uh, performed simultaneously in all four or five or six venues. Uh, and that all done using the cheapest possible tech uh, so we're going to be doing it with, with Raspberry Pi Zero, so it costs $5, uh, and cameras that cost $8, and, uh, uh, and what we'll be doing is we'll be teaching the kids to write the clients and servers. This is really hard tech. This is, you know, college-level tech, but 14-year-old kids will be doing it, and they will write the clients and servers that op actually operate the life-size puppets at every stage. So anyway, that's hopefully the next year. Um, I want to go to where that is. Yes. That sounds that sounds really fun. I don't know, all these yeah. <laughs> um, so moving forward, we're growing clubs. So there will be uh, more clubs on the map, which means there will be a lot more um, curriculum and content coming out of the clubs program. And I think we're going to really try to focus on um, curating content from across clubs. So finding ways that we can share it more widely um, so that people can use it um, to inform their own clubs and also contribute it, contribute to it. And, uh, and the people that are in clubs are very active and very involved in lots of different capacities and in lots of different topics and issues. So I think that's a big thing we'll be doing moving on after the festival. Nice. Thank you all, and thank you for those that joined us. Um, it's getting loud in here, which is the spirit of MozFest, and so hopefully if uh, you cannot hear people, we are going to transcribe and share some information to the people that joined us here. Um, but from all of us here at MozFest, we miss everyone, and we're sending large internet hugs, uh, and we're all committing to sharing stuff out, and I personally am really excited to share out some of the action and people that we've met and the exciting stories that have come from this weekend. So. Uh, thank you, and signing off from our most estranged Mozilla curriculum workshop ever, um, hands down. Chad and I have been doing this for a while now, and this is going to go down as the craziest one we've ever pulled off. But equally darling. Equally darling. Um, any, I mean, I usually take these from in my bedroom, so uh, anything outside of that is pretty crazy for me right now. Um, and now you know that, but <laughs> that's okay. Uh, thank you all for joining us, and have a great day, and we will share more later. Bye, Internet. Bye. Everyone's cheering. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Yay. All right, stop recording me. I will. <laughs> it's time for the B-reel. Hey.